Welcome to my Karate Kid playthrough. Now, first off, I want to say that this game is horrible, and the only reason I'm playing it is because somebody asked me to play it, so I decided to do it. This game is made by LJN, and if you don't know already, LJN is known for making some of the worst games on the NES. Uh, most of them were either movie-based or uh, TV show-based, like cartoons. So, yeah, they're really bad. They, they made some of the worst games on the NES, and this is one of them. Now, you start off in the karate tournament, which is incredibly easy. You don't even need to move. You can just stand in place and kick your opponents to death. And, uh, yeah, really easy. There's no reason to ever punch somebody, because punching people is just not effective. The range is too short, and I think it's less powerful than the kick. I'm not quite sure I never punch anybody, because there's no reason. After you beat the karate tournament, you are uh, transported to Okinawa, where the, uh, the main style of gameplay occurs. It's a side-scroller. You walk to the right and kill an endless amount of these enemies, which it's always the same enemy, just a standard dude in a red suit. And, uh, yeah, just kick him and they'll go down in one hit. Now this game is known for being incredibly difficult, and I somewhat agree, it can be frustrating, but if you take advantage of their bad programming, you can make the game much easier on yourself. And I'm demonstrating it right here. If you just have two enemies behind you, and you just keep walking, no enemies will respawn, so you can just walk at a leisurely pace and won't have to worry about any enemies. This works on all of the stages. All three of them. Well, it doesn't work in the karate tournament, but that's a different style of stage. At the end of every stage, there's a boss, which is really easy. Just like the karate tournament, you can stand in place and kick. So now, we have stage three, and apparently it's like monsoon season or whatnot. And the annoying thing about this stage is that there's birds and leaves and uh, sticks that come from the right continuously and they knock you back. It's, it's kind of annoying. It's not that bad though. You just kinda have to watch out for it. If you jump in a random place on the stage, I don't really know where you're supposed to jump, but in some places, if you jump into it or whatever, you get transported to a bonus stage, or one of three bonus stages. That was the first one. It is the ice block break bonus stage. Uh, depending on how much life you have, you can break those uh, ice blocks, and then depending on how many you break, you get a bonus. Um, if you look in the top right corner, you see uh, two letters, C and D. Now those are special attacks. The C is the crane kick, and the D is the drum punch, I believe. Now I'm not really sure how to activate these attacks. I think it's just random. Just kick and punch and they will activate. I don't really know. I'm just assuming it's random. But uh, those attacks, they're very powerful. Use them on bosses if you can. I like to save up the drum punches to use on bosses. Uh, drum punching is actually pretty useful. Regular punching is not. Anyways, here's the second bonus stage. It is the fly catching one, which I'm not very good at. You just have to press the button and your chopsticks will close and hopefully they close on a fly. That's what you hope anyway. I don't know. I usually get enough to get a bonus. You also get points for uh, the bonus stages, but it really doesn't matter <laughs> because points don't matter, especially in this game because who plays this game? Especially for like a high score, who does that? I don't think anybody does that. Uh, if you are wondering, I am covering this entire game in this one part. I did not want to stretch this game out to more than one part because I really don't want to play this game. Now here's the final bonus stage. It is the swinging hammer. And this bonus stage, it's it's impossible. Like, I, I can't get more than three. I think my record is three. I don't know. I, I just can't do it. You're supposed to punch and then, like, punch the hammer out of the way and then 
I don't know. I don't really get it, and I don't really care to figure it out, because I'm never gonna play this game again. I've beaten it three times, I did two practice runs, and this is my third run, and I never want to play it again. Occasionally, you'll see floating people in the middle of the stages, and those are uh, health upgrades, or not upgrades, where you can just restore your health, so make sure you grab them. Now here's our third boss. It is exactly like the second boss. Great boss variety. I uh, use the same strategy as before. Just kick it and it will die. After you beat it, you have to rescue this girl up here who's crying or something. I'm not really sure. After that, you are transported to the final stage of the game. And yes, this game only has four stages. I guess they thought that Instead of designing more stages, why not make them harder? I mean, I guess that was an easy way to make games longer back in the NES days, but it doesn't really work when you can kind of take advantage of the bad programming of the game. Always try to get enemies behind you, because in this level, the enemies, they aren't killed in one kick. They take multiple kicks, so you definitely want to... Uh, get them behind you if you can. Try to get at least one person behind you. It helps a whole lot because when uh, two people are in front of you, they can just hit you repeatedly and then you'll die and you don't want to die. Clearly. So right now I have two people behind me. That makes the rest of the level very easy. Uh, don't continuously walk because if you do, if you do that, the enemies will get off screened and then they will start respawning again and that is no good you obviously don't want that you don't want to fight the enemies you just want to run away from them because that's what you do in Karate Kid yeah and this makes the game really easy I know some people say it's really hard but if you do this if you use this strategy the game is actually pretty easy and here we are, we're at the final boss of the game, which looks very similar to all the other bosses. Use the same strategy, just kick. If you have some drum punches, use those. If you don't, then just kick it. And here's our ending of the game. Are you expecting a spectacular ending? I know I am. You have successfully guided daniel San through all of the challenges and have become a karate master. Or no, a martial arts master, excuse me. So what else? What else do we have in this ending? The end? That That's it? That's it? Are you kidding me? The end? That's all I get? Ugh. So now I'm going to show off the special modes of this game. There's a one-on-one -on -one mode where you have two players face off against each other. But, um, I couldn't find anybody to play this game with me. Who would want to play the Karate Kid? There's also a two-player mode, which is basically like the two-player mode from the original Super Mario Brothers. Uh, it's just like a race to the end, so... One person goes until they die, and then it switches to the other person who starts off at the beginning of the game, and then you race to the finish of the game. So if one person is incredibly good, they could just beat the entire game without the second player ever playing. So, yeah. So to show this off, I got to uh, Okinawa as the first player, and then I die. And then you'll see that it goes back to the second player at uh, the karate tournament and that's basically it and that concludes the karate kid playthrough overall this game is horrible I don't recommend you ever play this game it's absolutely dreadful never play it there are much better games on the NES so until next time this is UAA signing out I'll see you guys later